on behalf of the San Luis Obispo County Agricultural Education Committee and the grant support of the Harold J. Miosi Charitable Trust, we are proud to present to you the virtual Great Ag Venture experience. Please enjoy visiting a livestock veterinarian, Dr. Christina Graywall. Hi, I'm Dr. Graywall and I own Creston Large Animal Veterinary Services and uh, we usually do the veterinary presentation for the kids at the Great Egg Venture. Um, I've been a veterinarian since 2006 and I think I've probably done the Ag Venture at least four or five different times for the kids. Um, so today, because we're doing this virtual, we actually have a couple of animals as opposed to just playing with the stuff on the truck. Um, and we can kind of go through some of the basics of what we do every day with physical exams and exploring different things. We pulled out some uh, fun tools that we use to show everybody. So this is Sven. Um, he is a mini Hereford bull and one of our little patients um, that we work on. He, uh, today we're going to go ahead and just show you how we do a basic physical exam. Um, it's pretty much the same if we're doing horses or cattle or little goats and sheep and stuff. Um, and then we actually will get the ultrasound out and we'll look at his heart and you guys will be able to see it beating on the screen and we'll look at some intestines and watch all the food going through. So. We always want to look at their eyes and their nose, make sure we can feel that there's breath coming out and stuff, make sure that his eyes are clear. Um, Sven has very pretty long eyelashes and his big eye, so it's all nice and clear. Um, and then we listen to their heart and lungs. So the heart, we always listen behind the elbow right here in the chest and we can hear it beating. And then this area here is where the lung field is and so we can listen here and hear him breathing make sure everything sounds good we don't have many little crackly spots um, and we do that with our stethoscope which this end right here amplifies the sound it goes against the animal and then these two pieces go in our ear so we can hear um, and then back here we can listen to the different parts of their GI tract and make sure that we hear little rumbly grumbly noises and that everything is moving through like it's supposed to be um, Sven's a bull, so he's also got two big testicles, which on um, adult animals you also want to palpate, make sure everything feels good and there's not anything that's out of whack or there's not a weird lump. Um, and then oftentimes we'll take their temperature, which in animals we take rectally, so we always under the tail with the thermometer. Um, and then we look for any other lumps, bumps, swellings um, to see if there's a problem, check their legs. Um, and then just kind of give them a good once over. So that's a basic physical, depending on what we're looking for. If we're doing a lameness thing on the horses and stuff, then we're gonna focus in more on that afterwards. And we have a little pony friend, Bradley, that will kind of go over some of that too. So um, moving on, just for some funsies, uh, one of the main diagnostic tools that we use is the ultrasound and it uses sound waves to see through the body and create a picture on the screen that we can use to see the internal organs and see what's happening so um, for the heart again we're going to go behind the elbow and we'll actually get a picture and you guys can see the live heart beating awesome perfect this is dr mosh she's my associate Hello. she works at our practice This is the heart. This is the skin from the probe looking in. These are the two ventral chambers. And these are the two atria, which are the upper chambers of the heart. There's four chambers. And you can actually see it moving. And you can see the valves flapping. Right there and right there. And so that actually keeps, and if we turn our probe, we can get a cross-sectional view. If Sven doesn't eat the machine. What's that liquid you're putting on? Uh, it's just rubbing alcohol. So right here, this valve is actually the tricuspid valve. There's three pieces and it opens up like um, a little paper, the little paper game that the kids play. 
and it's like a little cup and it opens and closes like that and the blood goes out through there so that's our heart but yeah um, it's just rubbing alcohol and we use it for contact uh, to the skin the ultrasound doesn't go through air so we have to have good moisture contact on the body so if we go back here we'll look at Sven's intestines so all of these little circly loops are all small intestine and they open and close and all that little swirling action is the food material that's actually running through them and will soon become a cow pie on the other end. <laughs> so we can zoom around. If we had a horse or a cow that was having a gastrointestinal problem and wasn't feeling good, we could look around and make sure that everything was moving in there and that we're seeing movement and we don't have a blockage somewhere. So those should be all moving and grooving like that. Okay, Sven. And he's a pretty chill patient. Some of them aren't as good as Sven is. He is a, a buddy horse currently to one of the other older horses that doesn't have a companion. They're lifelong pals, so he lives in a, in a bigger pen with another uh, older horse. And he's been picking up all the scraps, which is why he's a little bit tubby. Yeah, Bradley says what? <laughs> um, so for horses, if we're doing lameness issues and stuff, um, a lot of times the feet and legs are important. So we'll pick out his feet and stuff. Bradley actually came with some uh, deformed hind feet as part of the whole rescue thing. So he takes some special fairy and they don't line up very well um, behind, but he gets around really good. And uh, the farrier that works on him keeps him trimmed up, but because his feet grew oddly, they curve like that. And even with um, therapeutic farrier they still don't 100% grow normal, but uh, he runs around and it doesn't actually seem to cause him too much problem, so we keep him trimmed up as best we can, but he's kind of a little bit of a, a special case as far as that goes, um, but he's been a, a, good, a good little starter guy. So normally when we're checking feet and stuff like that, this is called a hoof pick and we use it to clean out the dirt underneath out of their feet. So we can see the bottom of the foot. And we can see all the parts of the bottom of the foot. Bradley actually is just gonna be coming due for a trim from the farrier pretty pretty shortly. But so this area right here, this big triangular area, it's called the frog. And it's a little bit softer than the rest of the foot and it actually helps pump blood through the hoof and keep everything healthy. And then this outer area here, this is the wall. And that's what they actually walk on. And this part right here is the sole. Um, it protects the bottom of the foot, but it's most of the weight is born on this area. So if we had a horse that was lame and we thought that they had a maybe a stone in there, we'd clean that out, look and see if there's anything stuck in there, like when you're cruising around with no shoes on, you get a sticker in your foot. Um, and if we don't see anything, then we take these guys, which are called hoof testers, and you can actually put pressure and pinch and see if they move. Bradley doesn't have any problems. He's just standing there, so I can pinch on this really hard and it doesn't bother him. If he had a horse that was sore or had a bruise in his foot, then they'll pull their foot away. Um, and that gives us a way to test the sensitivity of the bone that's actually floating around inside of there. So we go around, we do all four feet. We feel all the joints and the tendons and the ligaments, make sure everything bends good and looks good. And then oftentimes we'll do a movement exam and jog them and stuff too, and then see if there's anything going on from there. So in, uh, when we were talking about looking at the feet and stuff, these are some x-rays we took of another horse 
that had what's called laminitis, which means that they have inflammation inside of their foot and it makes them sore. So what we actually did, this is called a venogram, and what we actually did is we take a little catheter we put a, a tourniquet on just above their foot and shave a little spot and we put the little catheter into the vein and we actually inject a special dye that shows up when we take the x-ray. Kind of like if you go have an MRI or a CT scan, they're trying to see if you have a injured arm or something or if you hurt your knee. So we do the same thing here. So we inject the dye in and it actually lights up all of the blood vessels that are inside of the foot which is why we put the tourniquet on and then you can see not only the bones but you can see the blood vessel structure so if we actually go to just a single screen and make this one bigger so this is where the catheter comes in and you can see all the individual bones but all of these little lines and all these little lines right here those are actually all of the little blood vessels that's filled with that dye so we can see and make sure that all the blood vessels aren't pinched in this particular for this particular problem that can be a blood flow problem and see the vessels inside of the foot with the x-ray so it's pretty cool pretty neat procedure Um, so that's one of the other things that we do. We use a computer plate to pick up the x-ray and read it, and then we get a computer image that pops up right then and there. Um, this is one of our portable machines. So it has a big touch screen, and when we turn it on, you can see those computer images like what I just showed you. Um, and then this special plate right here is the plate that actually picks up and reads the x-rays and sends them to the computer. We have a second unit um, that's a little bit newer than this one that actually is totally wireless that we do as well. It has a little bit bigger plate, so if we're doing larger joints like a knee or something like that, it takes up more space, um, then we can use that one. So this is the x-ray and the ultrasound are probably the two main diagnostics that we start with besides doing blood work. Um, we do that also and those cover a lot of ground for when we're trying to figure out what's the matter with the animal. So aside from doing regular exams in case there's something wrong, like an animal has an injury, we also do just regular wellness care. So like you go to the doctor every year for a checkup, the animals get a checkup every year from us as well. So they get a physical like we did earlier on Sven. They get their yearly vaccinations, make sure they're all ready to go for the year so they won't get sick. They get a flu shot and a tetanus shot and a couple other things. Um, and then we also check their teeth because it's important so they can use nutrients um, and that we're, the food that we're giving them, they're able to digest. And also we want them to be able to chew it up good so that they don't get stopped up. Um, so cattle, we don't tend to have to do regular floatings on, um, but the horses we do. And we'll bring Bradley back over again real fast. Come on, Bradley. So horses have the same number of teeth that people do. They're just situated in their head long ways. So they have their incisors in front. And then they have a big gap right here. And this area is called the interdigital space, or the interdental space, sorry. Um, and then behind that gap, all of their molars start. And they run all the way from about here to here. And they have two sets, top and bottom. So, I know, Brad. You want to snack it? There you go. So horses have prehensile lips. They'll actually grab their food um, with their little lippies, and they suck them in. And they can nip grass with their incisors, but they do most of their chewing with their molars in the back. So they take their tongue, and they push the food to the back, and then they push it into their molars that way. So this gadget holds their mouths open because when we say, ah, they don't keep their mouth open like you do when you're at the dentist. So we put it on like their halter and then their teeth sit on these little plates and then we ask them to open their mouth and it'll actually hold the mouth open. This is for a full size horse and obviously Bradley is a pony. So it can open. Open their mouth up and then that way we can see in the very back so when we put it in, it starts closed. And then as soon as we get it in, then we pull and it actually holds it open. 
And so then their teeth can rest on those plates and it allows us to be able to work in there without them being able to bite us. Then this called? guy is, um, is our dental float. And it's actually what we use to take care of their teeth um, because they chew in that triangular fashion and eat grass, their teeth actually erupt over time. Um, they're not like us where you have a baby tooth and it falls out and you get a permanent tooth. They have baby teeth and permanent teeth, but their permanent teeth keep growing until they're old. Um, so this little guy, we grind down all the little sharp points so that they can chew comfortably. So it's got a special disc on the end, and then we use that disc to round off any of the little sharp points. So that's why we use the speculum, because we don't want them to accidentally bite on the end of the motorized equipment while they're sleepy. And so that's primarily like our main wellness care is doing vaccines and checking teeth. Um, and then if something else comes up in between, then we take care of those things as needed. Um, so I actually wanted to be a vet since I was little. I pretty much only had a couple of things in my whole life that I ever thought about doing. Um, but veterinarian was the main one. If you want to be a veterinarian, do not write that on your application for the school. Come up with some other reason. But uh, most people, that's, that's why they want to be a vet their whole life. I actually uh, personally like the puzzle um, aspect of figuring out what's wrong with them. So it's like a big mystery and they can't talk to you. So you have to use all the little clues from your diagnostics to figure out what's going on. So that's the part I really like. Um, so we do primarily large animal, which is food animal and horses. Um, and food animals are basically farm animals that are traditionally thought of as production animals that we either eat or they produce products that we eat. Um, so we do cattle, uh, both beef and dairy. Um, most of our cattle clients are beef. Um, we do uh, the occasional chicken, um, although we're not chicken vets, but we do, we do do some chicken work. Um, we do pigs, uh, sheep and goats. Um, we have a lot of dairy goat clients. Uh, we do camelids, so llamas and alpacas. Uh, we do have a few actual camel camels that we've taken care of, but most of them are the um, little guys. And then um, on the com more companion side, we do the horses. And so we do ranch horses, backyard horses, show horses, in all different disciplines, English and, and Western riding. But, and then a lot of our uh, farm animal patients are actually little 4 h -er projects and stuff. And so we do a lot of that. And we do the occasional ranch dog. But um, most of the time, that's like on a emergency kind of thing. We're there and the dog got a foxtail snorted up their nose or something like that. But typically those guys come into town to see the small animal vet. <laughs> I own cattle, horses, dogs, some 4-H rabbits. Um, we had some lambs, but obviously they went to the sale. Um, those were the other 4-H projects, but mostly, mostly cattle and horses. Chickens. And yeah, we do have four little chickens. Five horses. The cattle, it kind of varies. Two are mine, but within our herd that we have between my parents and ours, there's anywhere from 30 to 50, depending on if it's calving season and the calves have been sold or if they're there. Um, and then my one pet pig, Pickles. And I have three dogs. My parents have two. Um, we have four chickens. We had two sheep, but they're gone, and two rabbits. And there's one, two, three barn cats. So quite the menagerie. <laughs>